Hello everyone, myself Dr. M. Bhuvia, Associate Professor of Horticulture, Faculty of Agriculture Sciences, working in Bharat Institute of Higher Education and Research. I'm handling the course on production technology for vegetable and spices. So, today we're going to see about the importance and classification of vegetable crops. In this lecture, we're going to see about the, what is our vegetables, the definition of our vegetables, the small introduction about the vegetables and the importance of uh, growing vegetable crops and its nutritive value of vegetables crops and because it contains both productive compounds as well as the productive compounds and non-nutritional factors in vegetable crops, the flavor compounds, the things that present in vegetable crops and the problems in vegetable production and the classification of vegetable crops. First we see about a uh, little introduction about the vegetables. See, vegetables are defined as edible herbaceous plants or plant pods, which can be consumed as a raw or after cooking and uh, which is rich in vitamins and minerals and low in caloric value. And it is also defined as the vegetables are the products of uh, herbaceous plants, mostly annuals, which provide fresh material for culinary purposes and generally it can be cooked before consumption or used as a raw or it can be as a salad, it can be used as a raw. The science of cultivation of vegetables is called as volary culture. Volary plus culture is called as volary culture. Volary culture is derived from the word hola or holas. Culture is derived from the word cultra, which means cultivation. Cultivation of vegetables is called as volary culture. See, India is grows the largest number of vegetable crops in the world. Almost all the vegetable crops which belong to the sub community of uh, spermatophyte and division and these bones. If we grow the vegetable crops properly, it can give eat about five to ten times than any cereal crop. And the post harvest losses of vegetable in India which accounts for 25 percentage and the vegetable processing and the export of India is about 10 percentage. And Netherlands is the largest exporter of vegetables in the world. And the leading vegetable producing countries in the world are China, which accounts for 49.5 percentage, and India, 14 percentage, and USA, 3.1 percentage. Next, the IBMR has recommended the uh, balanced diet for Indians. A dietary recommended dietary allowance in India is 300 grams of vegetables per day, which are uh, consisting of 125 grams of leafy vegetables, 75 grams of uh, other vegetables, and 100 grams of root and tuber vegetables, but the WHO World Health Organization has advocated 400 grams per day. And the per capita availability of vegetables in India is about 250 grams only. The average intake of vegetables in the country is about 200 grams per day. Whereas in other countries, the average intake of vegetables is in Italy, the average intake is about 593 grams, in Japan it is 523 grams, in USA, it is 469 gram, and in UK, it is a 449 gram, and in Canada, it is a 488 gram, and in Australia, it is 346 gram, and in China, it is 195 gram. Next, we see about the importance of vegetable growing. Why we have to grow the vegetables? Because we all know very well that vegetables play a major role in our human diet. They are very much rich in vitamins and the minerals, and it is also rich and a comparatively cheaper source of productive fruits in terms of the vitamins and as they are rich in uh, vitamins and minerals and beneficial in protecting against some um, degenerative diseases and plays an important role in the balanced diet of human beings. Apart from this, it also provides taste, palatability, which also increases our appetite and it also provides a paramount of fibers as well as the refrigerators, which it promotes the digestion and it also helps in preventing constipation. And the vegetables also playing a key role in neutralizing the acid which is produced during the digestion of the protein which or any kind of fatty foods. And it also the source of main source of income and the employment for the farmers. The first main factor is the yield high area in a shorter period of time. In tomato we can get about 400 to 500 quintals per hectare. Whereas in garden tea we can get about 100 quintals per hectare. Hectare. And in wheat, we can get about 250 to 30 quintals per hectare, and in pulses, we can get about 10 to 15 quintals per hectare. You can, you can compare this with the uh, yield between the cereal crops and the vegetable crops. In tomato, we get 400 to 500 quintals per hectare. And next one important factor is an important source of farm income. 
and vegetables the net return uh, it may be 20 to 25 thousand we can get uh, perfect there it is four to five times which is more than the cereals but in cereals we can get about only five thousand per hectare even in off season by cultivating tomato we can get about rupees one lakh per hectare whereas by cultivating peas we can get about only fifty thousand per hectare and the vegetable production which also assures more from employment like it reduces more labor intensive which uh, provides more job opportunities to unemployed people and it also has a great potential for using uh, idle or uh, seasonally unemployed form workers to give their family as well as it increases the total cash earnings also and it uh, main another important main factor is high cropping intensity which means in a shorter period of time as vegetables are uh, short duration crops like uh, radish turnip peas okra and potatoes can be cultivated we can follow a similar uh, similar cropping pattern like potato onion french bean okra then we can grow radish garden beans french bean and okra and another important factor is industrial development because as it has the processing the vegetables can be processed even if it get wasted the wastage is avoided and availability of products is for a long term like preparing the sauces from vegetables and the jams and the next important other factor is the seed industry for quality seed production of vegetable crops then foreign exchange you know india is the largest producer of ginger as well as okra among the vegetables and it also ranks second in production of potatoes onions cauliflower ginger cabbages etc and the fresh produce which includes onion okra peas whole crops cucumbers and beans and vegetable seeds and uh, processed vegetables like uh, tomato and pea preserved vegetables and dehydrated form uh, ginger garlic turmeric and beans and better nutrition can also lead to more efficiency and more income and it also has a high aesthetic value and the vegetables is the vegetables uh, consisting of two foods one is productive foods and another one is productive foods first we see about the productive foods productive foods are rich in carbohydrates proteins and other bridges the carbohydrates the vegetables which contains 400 to 500 grams of carbohydrates are sweet potato potato cassava carrot taro garden peas onion elephant foot oil etc they consisting of about 400 to 500 grams of carbohydrates and next one is protein the vegetables which consisting of 60 to 70 gram of average protein is peas cow bean broad bean fly bean fenugreek leaves celery drumstick etc so if the uh, vegetables if the deficiency of the protein content leads to retarded growth in children and discoloration of skin and hair and next one is the fats so low fat that is low fat the vegetables which are consisting of about 0.1 to 0.2 percentage of fat that is chili sweet pepper brinjal snake etc and next one is protective foods the vegetables which are rich in vitamins and minerals so the first vitamin is vitamin a which is otherwise called as the retinol vitamin a rich vegetables are carrot sweet potato pumpkin amaranthus walnut spinach fenugreek leaves broccoli kale tomato etc deficiency of vitamin a will lead to night blindness ophthalmia and frequent respiratory infections and next one is vitamin b1 which is otherwise called as yamen and the vegetables which contains about 1.2 mg of yamen are pollock cabbage garden pea tomato chili musk melon garlic leek onion etc deficiency of this vitamin leads to peripheral disease and loss of appetite and dilation of heart and next one is riboflavin the which is otherwise called as vitamin b2 the vegetables which are rich in, are rich in vitamin b2 are pollen chili uh, sweet pepper broccoli lettuce celery asparagus etc deficiency of these vegetables will lead to ulcers in the oral cavity and loss of hair and dry scaly skin and cracked lips and next one is vitamin b3 which is otherwise called as niacin niacin rich vegetables are kale pepper pollen amaranthus bitterroot chilies radish lettuce carrot garden peas etc deficiency of niacin will lead to pellagra and there will be nervous breakdown and stomach and intestinal disorder and so on the next one is vitamin b6 that is otherwise called as pyridoxine it is widely distributed in almost all the vegetables deficiency of vitamin b6 leads to ulcer of uh, you know, oral cavities anemia 
and it will also cause a certain skin diseases. And next one is vitamin C. The vitamin C rich vegetables are sweet pepper, chili, cabbage, broccoli, kale, drumstick, and parsley. And the vegetables which contain about 70 to 100 milligrams of vitamin C are cauliflower, citricol, and branches, etc. Deficiency of vitamin C relates to scurvy and like uh, edema, anemia, and will be having a bleeding genes and mucus membrane. And also reduce the resistance to diseases. And next one is vitamin K, which is otherwise called as a quinone, which is rich in green leafy vegetables. Deficiency of vitamin K relates to delayed and the party coagulation of the blood in fragments, and there will be hindrance in normal circulation of bile. And next one is vitamin D, which is otherwise called as calciferols, that it will lead to weakened bones. Deficiency of vitamin D will lead to weakened bones. They are rich in greens. And last one is vitamin E, which is called as a tocopherol. It is rich in green leafy vegetables. Deficiency of vitamin E will lead to allergies, dull skin, and hair loss. And next we see about the minerals, that is the calcium, iron, phosphorus, and the iodine. See, iodine, uh, first we see about the calcium rich vegetables are highest in calories. They contain about 200 to 500 to 600 milligrams. And the vegetables which contain support 200 to 400 milligrams of calcium are hyacinth green, palak, and fenugreek. And chow chow, parsley, and onion which contain support 100 to 200 milligrams of calcium. Deficiency of uh, calcium relates to bones and the teeth of problems and blood clotting and astromalacia. The next one is iron. The iron is important component of the hemoglobin. A deficiency of iron relates to anemia. Normally, green leafy vegetables are rich in the rich sources of iron content and it is a richly highest in amaranthus, which contains about 25.5 mg per 100 gram. And, uh, and also, it is rich in palak, spinach, lettuce, fenugreek, and watermelon. And next one is phosphorus. The phosphorus is an important component of DNA. It is being highest in garlic, and it is also rich in peas, lima bean, taro, and mushrooms. And uh, chili, broccoli, coffee, bitter gold, and the parsley, which contains about 70 to 100 milligrams of phosphorus. And next one is iodine. The deficiency of iodine relates to goiter and muscular dystrophy and mental retardness. And it is rich in uh, onion, okra, summer squash, and asparagus. And the other one is rapages. See, rapages will help in digestion, which also prevent constipation. And it is rich in leafy vegetables. Are root vegetables. Next we see about the toxic for sensitive and anti-nutritional factors which are present in the vegetable crops. The apine is the toxic substance which is present in the celery and the calcium oxalate crystals which is present in the colocasia, elephant root yam. So while handling as elephant root yam and colocasia will be feeling so itchy because of the presence of calcium oxalate crystals. And the next one is CN glycosides and linamarin, which is present in cassava, then cucurbitacins, which is present in cucurbits, then diasporin, which is present in yams, and hemagglutinin, which is present in French beans, and oxalic acid, which is present in amaranthus, portulaca, and basilla. And next one is saponin, which is present in spinach and tomatoes, and synergine, which is present in brassica species. And the next one is solanin, which is present in potato, and next one is solacinin, which is present in brinja. And next one is tomatin, which is present in tomato, and uh, the trypsin, uh, trypsin inhibitors, phytic acid, and anti vitamin E factors, uh, which are present in peas and the beans. And next we say about the flavor and health compound, which is present in the vegetable crops. Uh, also, we have the coal crops. The compound which is present in the coal crops are the volatile sulfur, dimethyl, trisulfide, indoles, and diatholians. And the flavor in the broccoli is due to the presence of glucophorin. And the pendency in onion is mainly due to the presence of allyl propyl disulfide and which it is also contains quercetin and diphenylamine. And the pendency in garlic is mainly due to diallyl disulfide and also the presence of quercetin. And the bitterness in petrograd is due to charatin and the celery it is mainly due to C and butyl thalamide. And in yam it contains diogenate and peas and peas which contains essential amino acids. And pita carotene, which uh, is present in leafy vegetables, carrots, sweet potato, pumpkin, and 
Jasmine plant green leafy vegetables. Let us say about the water on the problems of vegetable products with sweets and our non availability of quality of sweets as well as the non availability of inputs which is required for vegetable production and also paucity of authentic literature, especially for growers and the traders and consumers and the marketing problem and lack of storage and the post harvest and handling including uh, processing facilities the lack of uh, cold storage chambers and the best problems mainly arise due to the injurious uses of the chemicals and the cultural practices are uh, as per the recommendation are not being followed by the farmers and poor and inadequate irrigation facilities and the consumption pattern of the people like the below poverty land people have no money even to purchase the cereals and the lack of transfer of research from experimental farms as well as from lab to farmers which is some of the main problems which are encountered during the vegetable production. Next we see about the classification of vegetable crops. There are more than 240 plants in the world which are being used as a vegetable and classification is very very essential mainly to understand the nature of vegetable crops and the permanence or distinctiveness requirement for the commercial production of vegetables and mainly to show the relationship between the individual vegetables and to avoid repetition while describing the cultural operations and any method of classification will systemize us to some extent with the preparation and the presentation of the material and eliminate the unnecessary repetition of some of the principles of cultures and also the vegetable crop is consisting of about 1200 species and which 78 are familiar more than 860 species belong to 59 families or dicotyledid and the 801 vegetables belong to the monocotyledid 90 species of vegetables are cultivated in the tropical and the subtropical parts of the world but hardly 15 species have a commercial importance and these vegetable crops have been classified into various groups but the classification which is based on the cultural practices has been proved to be the best adaptable in the field conditions which is convenient to the growers because no single method of classification would serve the purpose for different groups like agronomists, traders and taxonomists and so on. So for the convenience the following methods of classification are being suggested. Like the classification is based on botanical classification and the classification based on the plant part which is used as a vegetable and the classification based on hardiness which is also called a thermoclassification then a classification based on park use and the classification based on essential methods of culture and the classification based on tolerance to soil reaction and the classification based on salt tolerance and the classification based on photophilia requirement and the classification which is based on rooting depth and the classification which is based on the growing season. Let's see about one by one. See, a botanical classification, the plants are divided into four subcommunities like the Talophyta, Bryophyta, Endophyta and Spermatophyta. And Talophyta, Talophyte all comes under the Talophyta and the Moses which comes under Bryophyta and all the thorns which comes under Tedophyta and then all the seeded plants which comes under Spermatophyta. This Spermatophyta is again classified into two categories that is Gymnosperme and Angiosperme. And the angiosperm is again classified into two categories that is the monocotyledony and the dicotyledony. No vegetable which belongs to the division of the gymnosperm. Most of the vegetables which belongs to the class dicotyledony and the classes monocotyledony and dicotyledony are further divided into family, genus, species, subspecies and botanical varieties. And next one is the classification which is based on the hardiness of the vegetable crop. It is also known as thermo classification here. The vegetables are which grouped according to their ability to withstand the frost condition. And this classification normally helps us to know the season of cultivation of a particular vegetable crop, like for example, the right time of sowing and the temperature requirement. But the cultural requirement of vegetables which are grouped as the winter season vegetables are not the same. So if this is the case, same with the summer season crops also. See, according to the hardiness, the vegetables are classified into three categories, the hardy vegetables, the semi-hardy vegetables and tender vegetables. Hardy vegetable means the vegetables which withstand frost without any injury. And semi-hardy vegetable means that they are not injured by light frost. To some extent, they will withstand the frost, whereas tender vegetable means they cannot withstand frost and even killed by light frost itself. 
the examples of hardy vegetables are broccoli cabbage peas brussels sprouts garlic onion leek radish spinach turnip parsley whereas the semi hardy vegetables are carrot cauliflower potato celery lettuce beetroot parsley etc and the tender vegetables are tomato chilies brinjal cucumber okra and all cucumber beet french bean sweet potato cassava yam drum stick elephant foot yam etc they cannot even all these are a tropical vegetables they cannot withstand even a light frost and the next classification is which is based on the growing season based on the growing season it is classified into three categories one is a first one is summer or spring summer vegetables and next one is rainy or starry season vegetables and the third one is winter or autumn winter season vegetables in summer or spring summer season vegetables the optimum monthly average temperature which ranges from 20 to 27 degrees celsius whereas the minimum temperature is about 15 degrees celsius the crops which comes under the spring summer season vegetables are tomato brinjal cucumber okra french beans cow pea most of the cucumber beets and brandes cluster beets which comes in the summer season vegetables and next one is rainy or dry season vegetables the crops which comes under this category are okra cucumber brinjal chilies tomato corn ginger tamarind cow pea hyacinth beans and brandes and cluster beets etc and the crops which comes under the winter or autumn season with winter season vegetables are cauliflower cabbage broccoli radish carrot turnip spinach onion garlic peas fenugreek potato etc the optimum monthly average temperature for winter season vegetables it ranges from 12 to 17 degrees celsius whereas the minimum temperature is about 5 degrees celsius and it can tolerate the temperature even up to 1 degree celsius or uh, asparagus and rhubarb normally the cool season vegetables are those vegetables of which the vegetative parts like the roots stems leaves and buds the immature plants can be eaten exceptions like uh, sweet potato and beet and spinach and the vegetables of immature fruits are eaten are the warm season crops like uh, peas and the broad bean are exception being a cool season crop then the classification which is based on tolerance to soil reaction see the vegetables are classified into three groups according to their tolerance to soil acidity one is the slightly tolerant moderately tolerant and very highly tolerant highly tolerant slightly tolerant means the ph range of the soil is above 6.8 to 6 whereas for moderately tolerant the soil ph is above 6.8 to 5.5 for highly tolerant the soil ph is above 6.8 to 5 the crops which which stands slightly tolerant to soil reaction of broccoli cabbage cauliflower okra spinach leaf chinese cabbage lettuce beetroot asparagus nuts melon onion etc then moderately tolerant crops are beans carrot cucumber brinjal garlic garden peas tomato radish turnip brussels sprouts nut nut parsley pumpkin and highly tolerant vegetables are potato sweet potato watermelon chicory rhubarb etc and next the classification is which is based on the soil tolerance so, the based on the soil tolerance it is grouped into three groups one is sensitive moderately resistant and the resistant or tolerant and the crops which are sensitive to soil tolerance are peas beans potato radish brinjal sweet potato etc and the crops which are moderately resistant to soil tolerance are onion carrot cabbage cauliflower broccoli tomato melons chili and the crops which are resistant or tolerant to soil tolerance are asparagus beetroot lettuce bitterroot and ash dot and the next classification is which is based on photo period requirement here the vegetables are grouped according to the period for which the light is available the response of the plants to light for induction of flooding is called as a photo periodism see uh, according to this it is classified into three groups one is long day vegetables short day vegetables and day neutral vegetables long day vegetables which are required 8 to 10 hours of dark hours whereas the short day vegetables which requires 10 to 14 hours of dark and the day neutral vegetables are normally photo insensitive the crops which comes in the long day vegetables are onion cabbage cauliflower potato radish lettuce nut nut chutney and carrot and the short day vegetables are sweet potato lab lab beans spring bean cluster bean etc and the day neutral vegetables are tomato brinjal chili okra french bean cucumber and cowpea
and the next classification is which is based on the routing depth so there are five groups of vegetables in this classification first one is very shallow rooted and next one is shallow rooted moderately deep rooted deep rooted and very deep rooted very shallow rooted means the root depth is about 15 to 30 cm shallow rooted means the root the depth is 30 to 60 whereas in moderately deep rooted the depth is about 60 to 90 in deep rooted the depth is about 90 to 120 cm whereas in very deep rooted the rooting depth is about 120 to 180 cm see the example for a very shallow rooted crops onion and lettuce for shallow rooted cabbage cauliflower garlic celery parlet potatoes spinach Cowpea, radish, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts, whereas in moderately deep rooted, brinjal, cucumber, muskmelon, French bean, carrot, and beetroot. Whereas for a deep rooted, chilies, turnip, summer squash, garden peas, and rutabaga. And very deep rooted crops are asparagus, artichoke, lima bean, pumpkin, sweet potato, tomato, and watermelon. So the knowledge of rooting depth is very, very essential, especially for scheduling the time and the quantity of the irrigation water. And the shallow rooted crops are required frequent and light irrigation, whereas the deep rooted crops which require less and but heavy irrigation. And the next classification, which is based on the parts used as the food, like the leaves and the stems. The edible part is leaves and the stems. For example, the cabbage, garlic, fenugreek, camaranthus, salad crops, lettuce, celery, parsley, and all the part herbs and the greens. And edible uh, part is the flour, examples are broccoli and clove artichokes, and fruits, tomato, brinjal, chilies, beans, okra, and cucumbits, and more the modified stem, molnar, cauliflower, and asparagus. And next one is underground vegetables like uh, carrot, turnip, beetroot, radish, potato, sweet potato, taro, ginger, garlic, onion, elephant, putium, and cassava. In underground portions, it is again classified into different types based on the uh, root tuber, bulb, palms, rhizome, and immature seeds. Example for root crops are beetroot, radish, and carrot, and tuber crops are potato, and bulb crops are onion and garlic, and palms is young, and rhizome the turmeric and ginger, and the immature seeds are peas and beets. And next one is the classification which is based on the methods of food culture. Here the vegetable crops having the same cultural requirements are placed together under one same group. This makes it possible to give the general uh, cultural practices for the group without the, any necessity of repetition while describing the individual group. And some groups like cucumber beets and uh, coal crops, solanaceous and the bulb crops are not only having uh, uh, similar cultural requirements for, for the group but the crop in each group also belongs to the same family. But most of the crops which belong to the bulb or salad group also have a similar temperature requirements. And this method of classification, even though not in all, but in the majority of the cases, it fulfills the basic requirements of vegetable classification of sure vegetables. See, the first group is a potato, and the second group is a solanaceous fruits, like example, uh, tomato, brinjal, capsicum, and the chili. And the third group is the coal crops, uh, with, like the cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, and all in all kale, which comes under the coal crops category. And the group four is cooker beets. They all having the similar cultural practices. That's why they are grouped together. Cooker beets are cucumber, bottle gourd, bitter gourd, rich gourd, watermelon, pumpkin, summer squash, winter squash. And the root crops are radish, carrot, turnip, beetroot. And the group six is the bio crops, that is the onion, garlic, and leek. And group 7 is salad crops like uh, lettuce, celery, and parsley. And group 8 is greens and the pot herbs like uh, spinach, coriander, fenugreek, pallet, beet, uh, beet leaves, amaranthus. And group 9 is uh, peas and beans, uh, garden peas, French bean, asparagus bean, lima bean, cluster bean, cow bean. And the group 10 is tuber crops other than the potato like taro, yams, elephant proteum. And group 11 is sweet potato. And group 12 is okra. And the group 13 is the pointed goat, and group 14 is temperate uh, perennials, example, global articles, rupa. And group 15 is the tropical perennial vegetables like Karimis, Dumstrik, group 16, Chow Chow. See, these are grouped according to their cultural practices. Okay, all these crops will be having a similar cultural practices. In the, these 16 groups are classified according to their cultural requirements only, like potato, tuber crops, solanaceous fruits, corn crops, cucumber crops, 
food crops, variable crops, so salad crops, greens and pot herbs, as well as the peas and beans, tuber crops, and the sweet potato like okra, pointed crops, temperate perennials like the globe or tichok, tropical perennial vegetables, chow chow. Mainly these are classified so that the cultural requirements will be very easy, the cultivation process will be very easy. That's why they have been classified according to the cultural requirements. So in this lecture, we have seen about the importance of vegetable production, the problems in vegetable production, the nutritive value of vegetable production, the nutritive value of vegetables like the protective fruits, the other protective fruits which are present in the vegetable crops like the carbohydrates, fridges, fibers, vitamins and the minerals which are present in the vegetable crops, so then toxic substances which are present in the vegetable crops and flavor compounds which is present in the vegetable crops for example like a diary disulfide which is present in the only at the main content see in only is due to diary disulfide for the example then classification of vegetable crops like the botanical classification classification based on the fruiting depth and the soil reaction based on the cultural requirements and based on the parts used thank you